Judge Engeron says that he wants this $350 million within 30 days. Now, I know that you're planning on appealing this, but you've still got right. to put up the full amount pending that appeal. Does Donald Trump so. have that kind yeah. of money sitting around? Yes. I mean, he does. Of course, he has money. You know, he's a billionaire. Um, we know that. Well, contrary to what Trump attorney Alina Haba stated there, it seems like Trump will be unable to make his $464 million bond in his New York civil fraud case. And that's not for lack of trying. So in a court filing, Trump's lawyers wrote, defendants ongoing diligent efforts have proven that a bond in the judgment's full amount is a practical impossibility. These diligent efforts have included approaching about 30 surety companies through four separate brokers. So Jenk, I'm gonna bring you in as the fancy guy with the fancy Columbia law degree. What does surety mean? <laughs> okay, not a big deal. A lot of mainstream media don't give you honest news. We do, you know why? Because of you. Paid membership on YouTube makes all the difference. Hit the join button below and you become the hero that sustains us. <laughs> okay, look, let me explain it more broadly. So uh, if he can't put up the bond, why is he trying so hard to put this bond up? And he did in the E. Jean Carroll case as well, because he never listens to the law, he never follows anything. There's a very good reason why. Because if you don't put up that kind of uh, money, then the Letitia James can start selling your properties. Now, if she starts selling the properties, he's in a world of trouble for a great number of reasons. Number one, he's not gonna have a source of income anymore. And number two, they might have to do distress sales, which will bring you less value than if you sold at your peak. So there's a great number of reasons why he's in a cold sweat panic here. And again, I might surprise you guys a little bit here. I think that he has an interesting case in terms of waiting till appeal to do that last drastic step. but. For sure, and then I'll get into my commentary about the lawyer, etc. He, he was never a billionaire, and now you're finding out, yeah, he doesn't have the money, for sure. I think I'm ready for you all to hate me, because I'm gonna say something that will make you hate me. I think this all goes way too far, mm -hmm. way, 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 way too far, okay? Guys, look, it was a civil case. Yes, he lied about the value of his assets and there should be punishment for that because we would all have to face punishment if we lied to the banks about our, the value of our assets in order to you know, secure loans or insurance. That's what he did here. Don't you think this goes a little too far? Like he paid all of those banks back. No, no, it, it, it depends, it, look, so I'm not positive about the amount because I, I'm not the judge in the case and I didn't see all the data that they went through. But I wanna tell you what that was so that you get a sense of the context. Okay, okay? go ahead. So uh, if you just said randomly, hey, give me $400 million because I didn't like the fraud that you committed, etc." Yeah, that's a giant number, giant number. And I would say that goes way too far, right? You have to prove uh, damages though, don't you? Yes, they, they, but they did. So what are the damages? Yeah, here's the damages. So number one, when you apply for a loan, you're gonna get based on your collateral and based on what you've stated, you're gonna get different interest rates. And so whether you take the loan and you pay it back is not the only material thing. So if an interest rate is 14%, which is super high as it was for Trump in when he bought the Taj Mahal in, in Atlantic City, you're much more likely to run into trouble, go bankrupt, etc. But the lender is more likely to make money because he's charging a 14% interest rate. Okay. So if you charge a 2% interest rate, you get it, right? And so they did the math during the trial on how much he saved by lying about his properties and hence his collateral. So that's the money, extra money that he cost the banks because mm. even if they gave him the loan, they would have charged a higher interest rate mm -hmm. and it would have equaled this much. Now Trump lies so often, commits so much fraud that he's made 50 million here, 30 million there, 400 million there from all these different frauds that he's run. And you can tell and they proved, hey, here's what he said was the value of the property in one instance, here's what he said in another instance, and it doesn't match at all, and here's the real value of the property. So they did real homework and, and real adjudication of this case. So the problem is, or, or let me reframe that, the damages 
that were proven were the damages in that the banks didn't make more money off of him through a higher interest that they could have charged him if he was more honest about the value of his assets. Yeah, that's a fair way of putting it. And okay, I just want to also note for the record that while we got this massive judgment in a civil case pertaining to the poor, poor banks and the damages that they have suffered, the American people have still not received any of the money that they're owed as a result of the damages that Trump caused by skirting his taxes. Yeah, I mean, look, that's a great no, no point. rush, no rush when it comes to that. When no, it comes no. to skirting your tax liabilities and responsibilities, which hurts the American people, of course, no rush in a judgment for that. But the poor banks, the poor banks. But by the way, that <laughs> you're not wrong that that's part of the reason why he's facing such stiff penalties here, because like we've said many times, who's the one guy who went to jail among the rich? Bernie Madoff. What was his crime? Robbing other rich people. Actually, there was a second guy, it was a Goldman Sachs executive, because he was robbing other Goldman Sachs executives, right? So that's the only crime in America that you'll get you know, punished for in terms of white collar crime. Okay, and Anna, I'll expand on what you're saying. Mm-hmm. We did a backdoor bailout of AIG and Goldman Sachs Correct. during 2008. We uh, printed trillions of dollars, gave it to the bankers, etc. Now, normally, when you bail out a company in a private context, uh, in capitalism, you get the returns once you bail them out. You own either a giant chunk of it or the entirety of it. The American taxpayers bailed out all those banks, all those uh, insurance companies, etc. We should have. You know how much we're owed? We <laughs> were owed trillions and trillions of dollars for those bailouts. We're never going to get that. No one's ever going to mention that. Et cetera, et cetera. So all those things are true, but nevertheless, in this particular case, they were correct about Trump. He did commit fraud, it did cost this much, and they added more money because of the back interest that he owes that on the money he would have had to pay back then, et cetera. And if Trump didn't like it, then he shouldn't have committed massive fraud. And by the way, I don't shed any tears for him, because this is only one case. In reality, he committed this kind of fraud dozens of times in his career and got away with it every single time because back then he was part of the elites and you never get prosecuted if you're part of the elites. Now that he's a little anti-establishment, all of a sudden a prosecution. So we're super fair. If you're a MAGA and you're like, oh, I bet he wouldn't have been prosecuted if it wasn't for politics. Probably, yeah, I totally agree. Because with he that was case. super rich, yeah, and they always let the super rich get away with it. By the way, I think that this case—I mean, I actually see it as a good thing. This case is going to open the floodgates because now a precedent has been set where a politically motivated civil suit has led to Trump having to pay this massive amount of money, right? And he might not have the money and it might lead to a complete financial disaster for him. And we'll get to those details in just a second. But you think Republicans aren't gonna turn around and try Democrats that they are alleging of you know, blowing up their assets or the value of their assets to something that's unrealistic and not based on any merit? Well, so that, I mean, look, so there's two ways that can go, and one is absolutely disastrous, and the other is actually kind of fantastic. So if Trump gets into office and does what he's threatening to do, and he did it again today, he said Cassidy Hutchinson, who used to work in his administration, mm-hmm. he said she should be arrested and put in jail. Come Why? Because she testified against him and said things that were true. She's such a clown, right? <laughs> so if he goes in that direction, where he starts putting people in jail for disagree with him politically. He's a monster, a dictator, etc. It'll be the worst thing that ever happened. But if they instead they don't do that and they go, oh yeah, okay, let's look at all the Democrats and all their connected buddies and how many times they committed fraud mm-hmm. and they pursue them through civil proceedings and then get that money back to the American taxpayer. A, that would be fantastic. B, it would make them populist heroes and make him incredibly popular, True. right? Yep. But Trump's not going to do that. He does. He does. And part of the reason is he is among the elites. He loves those other rich guys, and he wants their money and he wants their support. So he's going to try to put his political opponents in jail unjustly, and he's not going to pursue them through the courts like this. But if he did, he wouldn't be wrong. I would love to have both Democrats, Republicans, whoever actually committed fraud, mm-hmm. to be prosecuted as as Trump was here. So or he, tried. going back to his inability to pay that massive $464 million bond, keep in mind that in a deposition just last year, Trump testified that he had $400 million in cash. 
It appears that that is not necessarily the case. The lawyers also noted that bond companies typically require collateral of approximately 120% of the amount of the judgment, which would total about $557 million. That's a lot of money. In addition, sureties would likely charge bond premiums of approximately 2% per year with two years in advance. An upfront cost of over $18 million, the filing said. The $18 million also would not be recoverable even if Trump wins his appeal. However, Trump's lawyers insist that Trump's real estate holdings actually exceed the amount that he needs to pay. But to your point, Cenk, he doesn't want to sell those properties, right? And even if he were to be in favor of selling those properties, it's not as easy as selling a single family residential home in a super, super limited inventory housing market. We're talking about complicated real estate holdings that would require very complicated sales. And then the bond companies don't accept Trump's hard assets such as real estate as collateral. Right, so that wouldn't work as collateral if he's planning on doing that. So Trump has asked the New York appellate court to waive the bond requirement while he appeals the judgment, arguing that paying now would cause him irreparable harm. If the court turns down his request and he is unable to obtain a bond, New York Attorney General Letitia James, who sued Trump in 2022, could begin enforcing the judgment at the beginning of next week. And she has previously stated that she will look to seize Trump's assets if he cannot come up with the money himself. Yeah, so look, the, the lawyer in the beginning saying yes, he's a billionaire, yes, he has the cash is so counterproductive. Trump saying he has the $400 million in cash is so counterproductive to their legal claims. Why do they do it? Because Trump's whole image is built on I'm super rich, I'm so successful, I'm such a great businessman. So he doesn't want to admit that he's a failure and he doesn't have this kind of money and he never has. He's been lying the entire time. But in terms of what's right and fair, we can't have one set of rules for Trump and another set of rules for everyone else. And to me, putting up all the cash up front before you appeal the case seems draconian for everyone, not just Trump, right? And it's white collar crime. Look, I want it punished maximum. And if he loses the appeal, damn right, sell all your properties and pay up, okay? But what if he wins the appeal? So you made him sell all of his properties to get the collateral, mm -hmm. but then he can't buy them back. And if he had to sell them in a fire sale. So when his lawyer says irreparable harm, in this case, financially speaking, it would be irreparable harm. So I think that they, the system should allow for using collateral, but not Trump's inflated nonsense numbers, mm -hmm. but actual judgment of what those properties are worth. Agreed, and yeah. then if he loses the appeal, they take the properties. But if he doesn't lose the appeal, he gets the properties back. And that's fair, making him sell all of it up front before the appeals decided. It is the law, but it doesn't seem quite fair. Thanks for watching the video guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member and members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.